Back with another patron funded, patron requested review, the Stoger STR9C tabletop review and field strip coming up next on GB Guns. The Stoger STR9 series is an incredibly affordable, budget friendly, because it's affordable obviously, let's not say dumb things Graham, <laughs> striker fired uh, polymer frame pistol. This is the compact, the C, sorry for the cat hair, one of uh, the tacti kitties has been already investigating things while I was taking photos earlier. And uh, well I picked this up for under three. That's that's how affordable they are. They're made in Turkey. Where? I'm not sure. It's not marked anywhere on the gun or in any of the literature. Um, I did notice though, since everyone's going to ask about magazines, it only comes with one magazine which is a bit of a bummer. This is the 13 rounder being a compact. You can see it's kind of a subcompact size frame. The magazine gives you the compact size. I went through my box of magazines to see what's compatible. How many magazines is that? Well, go ahead and take a look at the channel page, go to videos, see the total number there, divide that by half, and about 80% of that half are how many pistols we reviewed, that's how many magazines we've got. So I went through hundreds of magazine patterns, the closest I found to it was the Taurus G3 and the Sarsalmaz Sar9 mags were very similar but not identical. Only one mag, other mags are running currently, as of when I'm filming this, it looks like around $30 which is significant compared to the cost of the gun. Not terrible for a magazine price. You also get your federally mandated lock and inside here we've got a magazine loader and a small Allen key to be able to drift the rear sight if need be. And the manual. We'll go over the manual next and then take a look at the gun. Why I care about the manual? Well that lets us know how much they care about you understanding and knowing the gun. Um, and this is an interesting one, keeps you on your toes. I went, of course, to see if plus P ammunition would be okay for this, since it is a sub four inch barrel. Ammunition, page 11. And as we open the manual to page 11, there's the 11, no mention of ammunition. <laughs> there is, however, on page eight, talk about ammunition, and on page 12, talk about ammunition. So, they're editing, could, could use some work for sure. It does mention in here that uh, it's for SAMI or CIP spec, and as we know CIP, at least the NATO part of it, um, is 10% over SAMI pressure, which is the same thing as plus P here in the US, and it mentions against using extend, uh, plus P or plus P plus extendedly, or for extended periods of time, so I'm assuming it's okay. As far as the rest of the manual quality, we have nice clear photos printed in color, it's an actual color manual. Not a whole lot of excessive colors, but it's there. So that's a nice touch. And it goes in fair depth. Talks about changing the back straps. However, no additional back straps came with the gun. So kind of a miss there. I'm wondering if that's for a different part of the STR series. More on that when we uh, take a look at the, the pistol itself. And it also talks about optics plates, which this gun is not optics ready. So this is kind of a general manual. Let's get that out of the way and the rubber band off the gun and we'll take a look at the gun. These rubber bands, by the way, are not entirely useless. Um, I do believe those who like to eat crustaceans uh, use things like this to keep claws in check while they get their thing home. All right, we'll check for clear. Locks open on empty, step one is good. And magazine ejection, nope. Nope, this is just a magazine release, folks. The magazines are nickel plated and marked made in Italy as are the Sarsalmaz magazines, so I'm wondering. But uh, you see the two cuts there, that's indicative of a gun that either has an ambidextrous magazine release or a reversible one. This one appears to be reversible. But uh, I look for those two cuts, and like I said, the Taurus and the Sarsalmaz have just slightly different heights on them, so would not work, at least in this gun. And as far as interchangeable backstrap, you guys can see what I'm talking about. It sure looks like a separate piece, but it's missing the little squeeze lever that was in the manual there. So I don't think it is something that's removable. These are sound like complaints, but really at the price point of this gun, not a problem, um, I don't think. This is seems to be a very affordable option for someone who just needs a gun, a magazine, they want something they can afford right now. 
I think this will do it. More on that as we take a look at the thing. So we've shown clear. As we come up to the front, we can see we've got a little bit of the bowl cut uh, weight relief and uh, texturing on the front there. Fairly flush front end. And these serrations, i get some angles on there for you, are actually pretty good. Grab fairly well without being sharp. So props there. Steel guide rod, another plus. Plenty of pick space underneath. We've got texturing on the front of the trigger guard for those who like to grip up there, though it is a rather soft texturing, it's not too deep. And you see this undercut of the trigger guard, that is nice. It actually feels really good on my double XL glove hands, which normally don't fit a compact or a subcompact. This is the capacity of a subcompact, but as I showed earlier, wraps nicely with that magazine on there. Magazine wall has a little bit of beveling. Most importantly, you've got extra tail here. I find that to be useful for slamming to index before inserting. So that's very nice. And the texturing on this is also pretty good. We can get our camera to participate with us. It, uh, it looks like the micro fissure type of, of texture. Come on camera. There we go. Um, however, it uh, feels harder, a little, a little rougher than that. And we've got nice spikes on the back to dig into your palm. The sights are metal, and we do have the tactical ledge for being able to rack off of something. Though keep in mind, for those of you new to pistols, generally the shorter your barrel is, the stronger the recoil spring has to be, which makes it harder to rack. So when you go to a sub four inch like this, you end up with a little bit of a stiffer spring. This certainly applies to the Stoger. Um, I've got no problem racking it, but it's not something I can finger rack. Uh, very well. Three dot sights that are good and tall. And up top here we have a loaded chamber indicator which will pop up to let you know there's a round in the chamber. How much does it pop up? Well I've got a dummy round in here and we'll see. About that much. It is enough to feel and to see. It's not glaringly obvious but it's popped up some so it's better than nothing. I like this kind of thing. Uh, I've carried guns with this and it's always a bit of reassurance to reach down and feel that and know the condition of your gun. On the right side of the gun, we don't have any controls other than the magazine release being reversible. Next, we'll field strip the STR-9C and take a look inside the gun. Field stripping the STR-9C is very similar to many other striker fired guns. Before we get to it though, almost forgot, trigger talk. This is what really shocked me with this thing and getting it out of the box. So obviously we're already clear. We have the safety dingus in the middle. That is the only physical safety on the exterior of the gun. Kind of a little sponge in the take up, but to a very clear, clearly defined wall and a good break. Reset is authoritative and short. Takes you right back to the wall for another break. A lot of people look at this and say, oh, it's a Turkish budget Glock clone. Well, maybe. It might be partially inspired by Glock, but uh, that trigger is pretty nice. The pull weight, for those of you with weak fingers, is probably somewhere around appropriate for carry. I'd say five or so, but feel is the most important aspect of any trigger, and this one feels pretty darn good. Now we'll field strip. So, field stripping, gotta check for clear. Going to release the striker pull down on these takedown tabs here and here on both sides of the gun and bring the slide back a little bit. I like to do that by squeezing like this, working it that way, and then let it go forward, slide comes off. Slide comes off with some friction, it makes me wonder if maybe some of what I'm feeling in the racking weight of the gun is friction between the rails and the slide and not so much the spring. Getting the spring out is pretty easy. Just Pull it and release it. Nice steel guide rod there and flat coil spring. Notice it is color coded. It's got green on there. That may indicate that they've got other springs either for other guns or for different weights in this. One thing with Turkish made pistols is a lot of them are sprung for the NATO loads, which as you may recall are 10% higher pressure than standard American stuff. And that can cause some Turkish guns to well, require a firm grip when firing softer American ammo. Getting the barrel out, tap on top. 
unlocks and comes out. We can take a look in our slide. As far as machining, I was curious because this is not a new model. See if they're running old tooling or anything. Still looks pretty darn clean. I do find it interesting that they moved the safety plunger up here from the Glock design. Uh, so at least there's some changes there. And I'm sure you guys noticed it's a different extractor style too. It's a longer extractor. So they've actually done a little bit of engineering on their own. Looking inside our frame, see steel inserts for the rails and otherwise very Glock looking bit. I'm assuming that tab there, oh, that's what's activating the uh, side lock release. I don't know what's uh, interacting with the safety plunger unless, yeah, I guess it's this guy, it's just happening way up there instead of further back on the slide. Kind of interesting, slightly different design. The gun feels a bit heavy in hand. It's not uh, your standard lightweight fare. Before I continue, oh, that's just the coating. I wanted to make sure that was actually clean before we do our chamber check. Uh, chamber fitment, as always, done with this Nosler match. Same, same box that we've used for hundreds of guns to check fitment on. So it's sort of a standard for us. What we're looking for and listening for is we want to hear a good plunk when the round drops in and then to see how much brass is exposed once it's in there. That was a nice plunk. Definitely turns freely in there. And as you can see, this isn't sitting as deep as some of the guns, probably because that extractor style, but it appears to be fully supported or about as fully supported as it gets without uh, changing from a different design. That's important in case you run into a weak case or an accidentally over pressure, over loaded round. Um, that helps keep forces going out this end of the barrel and not back into your hand. So props to Stoger for that. Uh, back onto the weight that I was mentioning earlier, as far as full specs and all that, I don't waste time reading that stuff to you guys. Uh, you obviously have internet access, you can find it on the site or the article for this gun, which will be at gbgunsdepot.com. We'll have all the specs that we can find. There we go. Nope. Wrong. <laughs> so I'll take it back apart. See what's going on there. That's some tiny. Jeez. That was on there. Ah. So. So that you guys avoid the same error. You see the ledge that the end of the spring is sitting on. There's also another ledge a little bit further down. You don't want to be on that bottom ledge, which is where I was. I film all the stuff pretty much, ooh, look at that. We had our end cap break or come off. Yeah, it broke. Well, that's disappointing. Interesting. There's still a piece in there. I don't know if it's uh, safe to fire that way or not. It looks like it's still covered, but uh, looks like we'll be trying that five-year warranty. Wow, didn't even get to shoot this thing. Can at least get it back together. Yep, it's back together now. That's interesting. Never seen that happen before. The plate sheared. Looks like uh, this top edge here and one of the pins is broken off in there. So there is still a plate. All that's doing is covering the striker and probably applying a little bit of pressure to the spring on the extractor. Might still be good to shoot. Still functioning here. That'll be interesting. We'll talk to Stoger's warranty department. So stay tuned. It might be a while before the range video comes up. Uh, disappointing. I was otherwise very impressed with this thing. Um, seems really nice. Out of the box, yeah, they shaved some corners, like only one magazine and that kind of thing. But I forgive that at this price point. What I don't forgive are broken pieces. I'm sure some of you have already tried a Stoger STR9. Let me know what your thoughts are, and uh, maybe you'll see this thing on the range, maybe not. Thanks for watching.